My mind is alert. My heart is open. And I am prepared to receive the uncompromised, the encouraging, the life-changing word of God. My life will be changed. For the better. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise. Amen. Oh, y'all don't know what you just did. See, now that, what you just did is you just added some hope to your faith. Faith was you saying the words, but hope was you releasing the expectancy. You expected to receive, and the Bible says that whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it. And you shall have it. Somebody said, I have hope. I have hope. Mixed with my faith. Mixed with my faith. And I shall receive. And I shall receive. In the book of John, chapter number, first John, the book of first John, chapter number five and verse number four, we find our text for this exciting new series that God allowed me to finally get to after, wow, 60 years of living. Here it is. For everyone that has been born of God overcomes the world. Somebody say, all my problems, all my problems are in the world. Are in the world. <laughs> but everyone that's born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Church, I'm teaching from the life-changing, life-building, life-blessing series. It's a series because I, I want to stay with this for a few weeks because it's going to take a while for us to really get into this. And it's entitled Victorious in Our Relationships. Victor Can you say it with me? Victorious in Our Relationships. My God, my God. Uh, some of you know that a few years ago, I asked God to give me one of the desires of my heart. And one of the desires of my heart, and I was telling the ministers this morning, the desires of your heart are typically those things that are secret. You know, nobody knows about them. Sometimes your spouse doesn't even know about them. Sometimes you don't even know about them. God has to give you the desires of your heart. But one of the desires of my heart was that I would be able to write contemporary plays. Because I've been doing all these, you know, plays, Christmas plays, Easter plays. Great. But I was like, man, I want to I wanna do something contemporary because I think that's what's going to reach people. And God, three years ago, he gave me the desire of my heart and I wrote my first contemporary gospel play, which was entitled I Ain't Trying to Hear That. And it was a play about relationships. Was that a good play? Y'all remember the play? Yeah. Amen. Give God some praise. Amen. And I noticed that when I wrote the play, we did the play about these relationships, then one of the actors back there, some the actors back there, that people really came out in the droves because especially black folk, they all, you say relationships, they're like, ooh, I'm going to find out because everybody wants to make their relationships better, right? Amen. You know, uh, I could, this could actually be one of the, uh, the main key statements, but we are the sum total of our relationships. Yes, we really are. And I'm not just talking about sexual relationships. Right. Relationships. We are the sum total of our. So you really you can't rise above the level of your relationships. If you got, if you got some shaky bad relationships, you you know. And, and in fact, growing up, we all you know birds of a feather what? And you know, I mean, you can't rise above the level of your relationship. So you have to have good relationships for you to have a good enjoyable life. That's why the title of the message of the series is Victorious in Our Relationship, because truth be told, well, that's another contemporary gospel play I did, right? That was the last one I just did, the title, truth be told. But the truth be told, you got some problems in your relationships. So you got you to gotta overcome. So here we go. This is lesson number one, and you can uh, subtitle today's lesson, Upreach, Inreach, and Outreach. Say that with me. Upreach, Inreach. And I'll read something I learned from my former pastor, Major Johnson. Amen. Taught me very well that the whole story has to do with upreach, inreach, and outreach. In other words, the correct order of love. Upreach, inreach, and outreach is the correct order of love. Now, you may have never thought about it like that, but you're going to learn something today. Somebody say, there is, there is an, order an order to love. To love. Isn't that interesting? 
thing. What do you mean, Pastor? I just love people. No, no, there's an order to love. And if you don't understand it, if you don't follow the correct order, that's why you're struggling in your relationships. Because there is a formula, or even better said, there's an order that God himself has laid out. And if you follow that order, then your relationships are going to be a lot better. And since you're a, 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 a sum of your, the totality of your relationship, then everything in your life is going to be better. Amen? And you know what I always say, if I don't what? If I don't show it to the Bible. You don't have to believe me, but you know I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. Because there is an order by which you got to love and by which your relationship will be better. Now, before we get into me showing you that, I want to give you some reminders because I like to remind us of what we've been learning kind of all year long. Because different series, different title, but it's all connected. First reminder is, I want, you to, I want to remind you of what victory means. I know it sounds pretty simple, but uh, I want to make sure you got it. The title is Victorious in Our Relationship. What does victory mean? Victory means overcoming. Victory means overcoming. Now, that's a very important point because it means that you must have something to come over. Don't ever, don't ever walk around thinking like this. Oh, why me, God? Why me? I'm going through. Everybody going through. The, the Bible says it like this. It says, in this world, you shall have what? tribulation. But be of good cheer or be of good courage, Jesus said, for I have overcome the world. And in him, he said, you can overcome too. Yes. Say, through Jesus, through Jesus, I'm going to overcome. In fact, uh, Paul says it like this. He said, you're more than a conqueror. That's another synonym for overcome. Say, I'm victorious. I'm victorious. Say, I'm an overcomer. I'm overcome. Say, I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. So this, this is this is who we are through Jesus. Jesus, notice he promised us that we would be victorious, overcomers, and conquerors, but he never promised us that we wouldn't have any tribulation. He just promised us that in him we would overcome. It's like, you ever watch the uh, Olympics and they have uh, one event, it's called the hurdles. Yes. They have to jump over these hurdles, right? That's, that's how it has to happen. Well, the, those hurdles are the things in life, the tribulations in our life. Yes. You, can't, you can't run through them, you, but you can jump over them. Yes. They're there. Somebody said, they're there. They're, there. they're obstacles in your way. But, but, but through Christ, you can come over them. Amen, somebody? Amen. Well, how do you come over them? Well, uh, I thought this was a good time to remind you all of our year's theme. Because I know I give you the year's theme at the beginning of the year, by, and here we are, basically mid-year, right? And if I ask you what the year's theme is, y'all be like, uh, let's see, uh, but you know what it is? Is it up there? Our year's theme is what? Victorious. Let's see, y'all said faith, hope, and love. Yeah, yeah, but victorious through faith, hope, and love. In other words, how do you overcome? Through faith, hope, and love. There are three spiritual laws that you got to use all the time. And it's faith and love. But the whole point is you, you're victorious. So our year's theme is what? Say victorious. Victorious. Through faith, hope, and love. Through faith, hope, and love. So I'm reminding you all the time that you're going to have. It, when, I, when God first gave me the theme, I thought it was a great theme. But as the years gone by, I realized something that I didn't understand at the beginning of the year. And that was the only way you can be victorious is have a whole lot of obstacles. There's no victory without adversity. In fact, the greatest victory always has the greatest adversity. Why is the gospel the greatest story ever told? Because you have a man who takes on the sin of the world and who dies, but then it doesn't end there. He rises from death. When, when all hope seemed lost, when all faith seemed lost, he said, but I'm not finished yet. On the third day, I will rise again. So what that's telling you is your faith is based on a concept that is when everything looks its darkest, that's when the victory is coming through. Give God some prayer. Yeah, you got to know that. You got to know that this is the basis of our faith. It, our faith is built on something that says it's when, like the old saying goes, it's always darkest before the dawn. When it looks its worst, that's when God comes through with his best. Give him some praise. When, it, when everything looks its worst, that's when God does his best work. That's when he 
does his best work. Like the, like the woman who was up here, we were praying for her. And she said the brother's been in the hospital since they've been, you know, there and he had not been responding. That's when, when all hope seems lost, that's when God does his best work. Yes. So now, when you are victorious through faith, hope, and love, what we've learned this year is that faith, hope, and love are a trinity of three principles. In other words, when you have one, you have the other two. It's like if you have the Father, you have the Son and the Holy Spirit, right? right. If you have the Father, you have the Son. Am I, am I right about that? Right. And if you have the Son, you have the oh. Father. So if you have faith, then you're going to have hope and you're going to have love. Faith works by love. Isn't that what Paul said? And love, guess what? Works by faith. That's what we're going to learn through this series, Victorious in Our Relationship. You have to learn to love by faith. I said you're going to have to learn to love by faith. Because you know the kind of love that God is talking about, you're going to have to do it by faith. Because it's agape. It's unconditional love. So that means that you're going to have to forgive even when you don't feel like it. You're going to have to forgive even though the person doesn't deserve it. Somebody say, that takes faith. That takes faith. Not feelings. Not feelings. It's not, it's not about feelings. Come on. You, you mean to tell me you think for one moment that God felt like becoming a man and going through all that suffering and dying for a, a bunch of people that didn't love him? That didn't need what? That's why he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I struggled with that for years, thinking about that. What do you mean they know not what they do? They know what they're doing. No, but really, they didn't know. It, they, they, they didn't really appreciate that this was God. I mean, the centurion said, surely this man is the son. He must be the son of God. No man would, would say that with people cussing him and spitting him and, and killing him and doing all this stuff. But really, the truth of the matter is, we're going to have to learn to love by faith. We're going to have to listen. I don't know what your uh, political party is. I don't know uh, what you think about the president. Uh, but I can tell you right now that the word of God tells me I got to pray for him by faith. And I thank God he said that because I sure ain't praying for him by feelings. I'm sorry. But, 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 but I just got to do it. Because the word tells me to pray for all of those who are in authority. So I don't just pray. When I'm praying, I don't just pray for my political party. I have to pray for everybody who's in office. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. If my, listen, if my candidate don't win the mayor's seat, I still got to pray for the city, the mayor, and everybody else. Amen. If there's racism in the street and some people don't think black lives matter, I still, still got to pray. And that, that doesn't mean... That I can't pray for God to expose and reveal and remove some things too. Now I can pray. I can pray that. But the Lord did tell me to pray. And I can pray for them to have wisdom. I can pray for them to change. There's a lot of things. But I'm doing it by faith, is what I'm trying to get you to see. Amen? Somebody say, pray by faith. Pray by faith. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now listen. Here we go. The special focus for this series is our human relationships. Now, now, in this particular lesson, lesson number one, I'm not going to really get to totally the how-tos of the human relationships because i got to lay a foundation. So y'all be patient with me, right? Because remember I told you there was an order to love. Uh, and I'm gonna, that's, that's going to be the focus today. I'm going to really talk about, remember, lesson one is upreach, inreach, and outreach, the correct order of love. So i got to deal with that first. But I'm still letting you know that where we're going the focus of the series in total is about how do I have better relationship with my fellow man? So that's some good stuff. Somebody say, I can use that. I can use that. Turn your neighbor and say, you can use that. Use that. 